Hey guys, what's going on? Cyber Fury here, bringing you guys my first foray into the world of GT7 Online Racing. This came after I played a bunch of the single player, got my bearings straight, figured out how cars handled, and then decided I wanted to see how I stacked up against other players in the GT7 community. The footage you're seeing here is a little bit old. It's been sitting on my hard drive for a little while while I've been trying to get some time to record this commentary, but here we are. What we're featuring in this video here are going to be three races from my first ever session with this race right here being the very first one that I ever did just so that we can see kind of where I've started and where I end up here. The guy behind me casting become ethereal if you remember that shout from Skyrim careening through me and ending up again behind me but thank you to that system that I know only affects really the lower ranks of GT7. But man, is it handy when somebody just goes right through you and you don't have to worry about being spun or being completely taken out on one of the first major corners of the race. Moving along here, we got a major mistake out of P1. Ends up turning right on the left-hand turn after hitting the dirt there. Unfortunate for him, not usually the game plan you want to go with during a race. Sometimes it can work out for you, but unfortunately it does not for him here. That puts us up into P2, just behind CRI. And the game plan for me continues to be try and stick as close as I physically can to P1, trying to separate ourselves from the pack behind and don't fight too much in the early stages of the race so that when the inevitable fight comes, potentially if I can stay that close, then we'll have a chance to actually snag P1 from him. But this will prove to be challenging as you can see is because he's actually driving pretty decently hitting this corners and this braking spots. He's naturally faster than me, qualifying slightly ahead of my time in the first ever race here. Coming around this next bend, I realized that I'm trying to pick up cues on how he's driving, trying to figure out where he's going, how he's doing it. He ends up taking this corner a lot faster than I do. And I try and see what line he's taking through there and see what he could potentially be doing. And I decide on the next exact lap, I'm gonna do the same thing and absolutely not hitting the wall, getting myself a second and a half penalty, which I then serve and basically watch as my P1 hopes are completely dashed as he kind of just takes off. Coming around to the end of the lap there, going from a two to a 204 is not a great feeling and going a little deep into this corner here, I believe. Yeah, I was a little shaken from that and trying to figure out how the heck I'm gonna get back into this race. But luckily, as I come around this corner here, I kind of see him a little bit closer and thought that's a little odd that he's that close. And as we come around this bend here, the keen eagle-eyed ones of you can see, those were taillights that were on. He ended up getting a penalty for I don't know what, probably hitting a wall somewhere. And just like that, we are right back into this race. We are right behind him. The game plan now switches to, can I actually catch him and can I overtake him on this straight? He's starting to feel the pressure a little bit as I roll up right in his rear view mirror. And on this straight here, this is where we need to overtake him. I'm thinking to myself, you know, I need to stay in the slipstream, I'm trying to get as close as possible but it just doesn't seem to be really doing it for me. As we come around this last bend here, I'm thinking to myself, if I can stay in the strip slipstream, I might be able to catch him before the line. We're slowly catching him and just keep creeping on him and creeping on him and creeping on him. But unfortunately, the finish line creeps up a little bit too quick and we have to settle for P2 in our first ever race. Can't say that I'm overly stoked about it, but can't say I'm disappointed either. Jumping into race two here, you can see that P1 kind of gave us a bit of a gift. Don't know if he was getting himself a snack or a drink or what was going on, but at the end of the day, he wasn't behind the wheel when the lights went out. So we are happily going to take that gift and thank him for it as we leave him in our dust. The game plan for me now at this point just becomes, can we drive clean enough and fast enough to stay here without having to worry about everybody else who's behind us just drive our own race. We've already qualified ahead of everybody else time-wise, so we know we're quick. We just need to make sure that we execute on our game plan, make sure we keep in mind all of our turning points, our braking spots, and not have to worry about too much as we just drive our own race. As I said earlier, this was my very first session in GT7 Online Racing, so please forgive any obvious beginner mistakes or newbie mistakes that you might see in the driving. I promise you it does get better as the video goes on as I completely botched that corner. Stay with me on this one. I do end up improving quite a bit by the end of this video. But as always, if you do have any tips or tricks or things I need to improve upon, 
please leave them down below as the guy behind us ends up becoming ethereal himself originally i thought he was still right up next to me but as we will see here on this replay he kind of got booted a little bit so here we're coming around the corner here here he takes the dive bomb on the inside, ends up going invisible, snaps back into reality, hits the dirt, slams into the side of me. I didn't actually realize I kind of threw him that far across the road. I still thought he was right up next to me as we come around this corner onto the straight. It's kind of a godsend in terms of the gap I'm given here. And at this point, this is where I try to make sure that I get as big a gap as possible. He's significantly slowed down from that little interaction that we had. And all I need to do now is make sure that I get a couple of clean corners and a good run onto the straight. And we should be in pretty good hands here. As we flip back to the third person cam, we can kind of see that I am building a bit of a gap here. And before this race ends, I will end up having a double digit gap. I can't remember if it was 10 to 15 seconds or if it was 17 seconds or whatever it was in there. But basically at this point, I am now time trialing myself, coming across the line on the first lap of the 207, and then a 2, and then a 159. So not quite breaking into the 158s, which was my goal. My qualifying time for this race, I believe, was 159 something. So it became my mission to try and break through the 158 barrier, as at this point I'm pretty much racing against myself and just trying to continuously improve lap times around this track for when I'm moving up the driver ranks. I have tried other games like AC and ACC and other games like that that have external communities such as LFM and Pit Skill. The only unfortunate thing for me is due to timing and scheduling. Most of those communities seem to be European based and drive based on European times, which are more or less unavailable to me as somebody living in the middle of North America when the time that I really get to drive would be evenings in, during the week potentially during the mornings on weekdays, which is when I would hop into there. They're great, but they're not as quick and as easy to get into as something like GT7 is for me. I know that there's a whole other argument to be given with physics and driving behaviors and stuff like that between games, so I don't want to get into that in this video here. I'll leave that to the professionals that actually know what they're talking about. I just wanted to say that's why I'm kind of taking the jump into GT7. It's just an availability thing for the most part. However, if you do know of a community that has some great availability when it comes to North American time zones or being based in sort of the North American side of the world, please do let me know in the comments below. I'd love to check them out and kind of become a part of them if possible. Just try to broaden my skill set and broaden the races a little bit. It'd be nice to jump around from game to game and just sort of be able to dip toes in different pools and see what kind of fits best. And as we come around on essentially the final straight here, up over the hump and into the light we are very far ahead and have been since start the start of this race we can finally let out a sigh of relief and come across the line potentially in the 158s no just short again of 158 however taking the checker flag so that's always a good thing but however not exactly where we want to be on to race three now the first thing you'll notice is that p1 is behind the wheel so unfortunate for us we can't have another really quick win but that does mean that it's going to be a more exciting race here as p1 i believe his qualifying time was fairly normal to mine or fairly comparable to mine rather we jumped back out after the last race did a few more qualifying laps did get our time down i think into the low 159s so that set us up pretty great for this race here again qualifying in p2 so coming around the first bend here, I'm trying really hard to race clean. That's a priority for me is racing clean and not taking out anybody. I know there's the protection system in GT7, but it's not there in every game, nor will it always be there for us. So relying on it does not seem like a very smart thing to do. My game plan is kind of the same as it was in the last couple of races when I was trailing somebody in the beginning of the race, which is to just stay as close as possible let the pack behind kind of fall behind hopefully with their infighting and don't fight too bad with the guy in first to not slow us down as you can see b3 is a little bit behind as i try and take the outside line here not really working out for us i'm trying to gauge not only if i can make the driver in front make a few mistakes by being in the rearview mirror and being kind of around him but i'm also trying to gauge the performance handling 
of that car that he's in. You know, obviously not being in the same car, I don't know the ins and outs of every car in the game at this point. It would be a nice thing to do and a nice thing to learn in the next little while here as we race and gain more experience. But I'm thinking to myself, just race clean. And the minute I think that I end up hitting the dirt and careen across the road, luckily there was nobody really beside me there and there wasn't a wall right there. So no penalty for us kind of escaping with a little bit of you know, being a little shaken up, not going to lie here. But again, we're watching P1 take off into the distance after a very stupid mistake. And we're just hoping to ourselves that we get a chance to catch up to him again. Coming in across the line a second slower than him. He's posting a 206.4. We're posting a 207.9. So actually a second and a half slower than P1 at this point. And really just trying to see if he'll make a mistake. And just we got to race clean to get back up to him. It's hard sometimes not having a sense, a little bit of a sense of dread, knowing that you could have a lot better position at this point by not making a stupid mistake. But this is the reality we're in right now. I'm just trying to kind of study his movements, his braking spots, see if I can kind of outdo him or see if I can find a spot where I might have the performance where he doesn't and vice versa. But as we approach this next section of track, I want you to kind of take a look at the things he's doing and seeing if you can pick up on the little mistakes that he's making that I was sort of making a mental note of as this race was going on. He's making some fairly minor mistakes in my opinion. I don't know if it actually is a mistake or if it's more of a time-saving maneuver that he's doing here. But I wanted to make a mental note of that just in case that would allow me a chance to take advantage of something like that or if I needed to start doing something like that to be faster to catch him. As we come around this straight here, I know that I'm way too far back. I don't have slipstream. I'm not going to be able to catch him. So my focus kind of half turns to the guy behind me and making sure that I'm far enough away from him to put him in the same situation that I am as P4 and P3 swap. So now I know that P4 and P3 are in a little bit of a battle here, which is good for us as it's going to allow them to slow down a little bit. And as we come around this corner again, making sure do it cleanly this time stop making stupid mistakes and we end up being a little bit closer to him at the end of this lap so there is some hope for us here as we kind of come up and over the hump here onto the straight and the focus remains on driving clean driving fast and getting back in slipstream range whether that's actually in the cards for us is yet to be determined we're still just out of it but we do end up pulling finally a 158 out of the bag with a 158.9 while trailing this guy so we do know that he is pretty quick but being in p2 i do have currently the fastest lap so that gives me a lot of hope knowing that i'm running a faster race than him right now which means that i will inevitably catch him if things continue to go on the way they are of course there's an argument to be made that we're only halfway through this race and there's still tons of race yet to run and tons of mistakes can still happen as you can just see how close we are now to him all of a sudden and now we're still a half second faster than our fastest time ever so we're making great time here as he ends up pulling out a maneuver and pulling out his best sand true impression trying to throw us off with sand attack i end up kind of falling back a little bit to see if he was going to lose it on a couple of those corners when he was hitting those corners pretty hard so now's my time to try and get close to him and it's on this corner right here that he makes the fatal error of going a little bit too far into the dirt. He slowed down. Now I know he can't make the corner. He's going wide. I decide to point my nose in as hard as I can, take up the inside, and end up running in front of him on that straight. Just watching this again from a different angle here. Here's where he makes the mistake. And I figured out that I can get to the inside pretty easily and pretty cleanly, actually, and take that inside corner. He ends up giving us a little tiny bit of a tap there which felt a little bit more intentional in the moment. I do remember the steering wheel kind of jerking to the side and I thought he was trying to spin us for some reason, but it was a very small little love tap there. Coming into this little part here, we've got shutting the door not only once, but twice on him and then putting on a run here on the straightaway where he takes that corner, not the greatest. And so that allows us to get a bit of a gap here and just kind of extend our lead, pushing him out of slipstream range and allowing us to kind of take our first lead, but also the first kind of significant gap here since we made our stupid mistake earlier in the race. 
rounding out this lap we're going to pull in with a 159 unfortunately a 159.66 so not the best time we actually slowed down by almost a second there on this lap by overtaking him but now the focus becomes how big can we make that gap as well as can we actually hold this lead there was still a lot of race to run at this point a whole nother lap around this relatively large track and we didn't want to make any stupid mistakes and hand him back the lead if he didn't earn it coming through the tunnel into the light we can finally breathe a sigh of relief as we are ahead of him and not only that, posting our fastest lap time to date at this point. What a way to end this race. I'm actually pretty proud of this race. I thought it showcased a good way of staying back, examining the driver in front of you's behaviors, looking for mistakes, and capitalizing once you find them. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like. If you didn't enjoy this video or know of ways that these can be improved, please also leave me feedback down below. I'd love to hear suggestions from you guys, not only on the racing side of things, the driving side of things, but also from the video production standpoint itself. I want these to be enjoyable for anybody who watches them. And your feedback is the best way of knowing whether or not these videos are actually doing anything. Links down below if you want to check them out in the description. I've been Cyber Fury. I will see you guys later. Peace.